gonna get a big one. What are we gonna go get? A bowl. <gasps> a bowl. Are you excited? Yeah. Good. I too. Are you excited? In January, Ryan was in a car accident and he injured his ribs pretty bad and could not work. We went a couple of weeks without a paycheck and we went over a month without going grocery shopping. And one of the good things that came out of it is we realized that we had enough meat and vegetables in our storage because we had raised enough from our farm and we were okay there. The only thing that I had to have Ryan stop and get at the grocery store during that month was milk, butter, cheese, and sour cream, all dairy products. And all I could think was, we have got to make getting these cows bred the top priority. So after two years of trying to find a bull locally to breed our Piney Woods and now our Mini Jersey, we have finally found what we hope is the perfect bull. He is very young, so we have a little bit of time to raise him before he's going to be ready for the job, but it should be a pretty minimal amount of time considering we've already waited two years. <laughs> so one of the challenges that we have faced with having our own cows is finding the proper bull to breed them with. Originally, we thought we were going to have access to a Piney Woods Bowl that didn't work out and we started searching for a bowl for our Piney Woods two years ago. Well, a lot of people don't realize is Piney Woods are actually a very short breed of cow. They're usually under 45 inches into the mini range and so what I was looking for was a mini bowl or a bowl 45 inches or shorter like a Dexter, a Mini Highland, Mini Jersey. And because we have a small farm with small kids, we really didn't want the bull as a full-time adventure. We wanted to borrow a bull, breed our cows, and be done with it. That did not work out. At one point we had a Dexter lined up, but he ended up getting sold before we had a chance to use him. So, the journey continued on searching for the right bull, one that was small enough to breed our cows safely, but also, you know, making sure that they were disease-free, test, disease tested, good, you know, quality. All of that became a very difficult journey. We looked into AI, and from everything in our research, AI would be a very expensive way to maybe get our cows bred. Looking into AI turned out to be something that I didn't think we could financially handle. There were a lot of different reasons why. I also was faced with AI technicians that said that they could not get the straws for the smaller bowls. And nobody guarantees it. It's not a guarantee. Even if I pay almost a thousand dollars to have my cow AI, I have no guarantee that it would work. And they don't come back and do it again for free. So it didn't feel like the right fit for us in our situation. We don't have a cattle shoot. We don't have the infrastructure that would have made it easy to do AI. So we went back to looking at bulls again. We basically sat back, prayed on it, said, you know, all right, let's see what the universe is going to bring us. We, we know that the right decision is ahead of us. We know that we're going to get our cows bred. We just don't know how yet. And then I came across an ad for some beautiful miniature Jersey bull calves. This is nothing like a baby goat or sheep bridle. This thing's huge. 
Baby calves are huge. Morning, chap. How are you doing, buddy? Good morning. Are you ready for your bubba? Yeah. Oh, you know what time it is. Yes, you do. Just about the cutest time ever on the homestead. So, this is Trap. He is our new mini Jersey bull calf. And he will be breeding in a few months when he's ready to our mini Jersey Daisy and our Piney Woods. So we are very excited to have this opportunity for milk on our homestead at a much higher volume than goats or sheep could ever provide. <laughs> he keeps running for the door. Even though it's closed, it's like he almost knows it's not locked. I'm trying not to get attached or overly affectionate with him because he is a bull and bulls can be dangerous when they're older. Which is super hard because he is so, so sweet. He wants more milk. I'm trying to break his bottles up into two feedings for my sanity because his bottle only holds half a gallon. So yeah. He thinks he's supposed to have more milk right now, but we're gonna break it up into two feedings a day instead of one. Oh, no, put it to his head. Don't pet his head. I have to keep telling myself that. My cows love to have their head scratched, so I'm trying not to do that because he's a bull and I don't wanna encourage any off behaviors, but he likes his neck scratched and he likes his body scratched. So I'll do that. It's hard not to love on him all day long but i also want to make sure that he doesn't get to be a mean jersey so he's staying in the trailer today we got home late last night and it was dark so we said okay you just go to bed we'll we'll set you up with a cool little spot in the morning so when ryan gets home in a little bit we're gonna do just that Aren't we but buddy? I keep calling him buddy because he's like a buddy, but his his other friend that we didn't purchase was named Buddy, so I'm like, I'm, I hope I'm not confusing him. But yeah, he's doing good. I shouldn't be letting him look on me, probably, huh? That's what some of you are probably gonna be saying in the comments. I'm going to take all advice that um, is kindly delivered. And I'm going to do even more research because I was actually thinking we were going to end up getting Buddy, who is already off of the bottle. He was a month older. And then when I met them, it was obvious. See how he just did that headbutt thing? That's a I want my mama milk movement. And I don't want him to think I'm mama. So I got to be a little more assertive with him, using my knee to push him back when he's a little too pushy. And I don't want to stop him from licking me. I, oh my gosh. How am I supposed to not let him do that? Oh, I can't let him do that. It's bad. I can't do this. Oh my goodness. I'm going to get so much flack for this. <laughs> gosh, he's so sweet. How do you people with bulls on a bottle handle this? I don't know how to handle it, but I'm going to do my best. And it's going to be, it's, it's going to be good enough. He's only going to be here long enough for his breeding, and then we will offer him to a new home. Daisy, do you have pollen in your nose? Huh? You got pine pollen all in your nostrils? Hey, baby. So Daisy is ready for breeding, but we've had a hard time finding a bull locally that is small enough for her. So we had to take steps to get our very own. All right, come on. <laughs> I turned it on to show how good he was walking with me and he stops. Okay, come on. He's such a good boy. Come on, baby. 
bringing him to his new shelter. <laughs> I decided to let him off the leash here in the quiet guineas in the buck pen so he could stretch his legs, get some exercise. This is his new shelter over here until he's big enough to go in with the big girls. Good work, Daddy. Those cows are like, what is that? Feeding time on the homestead. <laughs> Everybody gets a little bit of grain, even if they don't quite need it. <laughs> Spoiled babies. Good job, Daddy. Good job, Liam. Yeah. Good job, Trap. I'm gonna go make you a bottle, okay? Will you be Will you be happy if I make you a bottle? You got your nice bed. You got lots of hay and water and food. Oops, and <laughs> you're super curious. You're so sweet. I'm not supposed to pet the head, is that right? I don't know, he seems so young still. Like he needs a little bit more affection because he's so little. I'm so little. All right, I'm gonna go get you a bottle. You're acting like you need a bottle. You're doing that bottle thing that babies do. Who's a good boy, huh? Who's a good boy, Trap? What are you doing, Liam? I'm feeding the cat. That's fun, huh? Yeah. Aww. He loves... Oops, oh. careful. Yeah, okay. Like I said, watch when he bumps that you don't bump your knuckles on the fence. He is very excited to have his bottle. You know, there is one thing that I can say is that cows are a much different investment than goats. You are going to spend four times as much on a single animal. The inputs of milk are gonna be four times as much. The inputs of time are four times as much. Everything is just quadruple, but it's so gonna be worth it. I just know it. I can't wait till I'm just making cheese and butter and enjoying all of the fresh raw milk for our family. One thing I know is that with three growing boys, the goat milk was just not high enough volume and high enough cream to make all of the other sub products. So this was the best decision our family could make. And I do not regret it, not one bit. I don't regret the time or the money invested into this. It is already filled my heart with pride and love and I am so glad <laughs> that we could do this. Hi Daisy. <laughs> I heard you. She wasn't there when I started recording. She just showed up. She loves her mama. Don't you Daisy girl? Don't you love mama? She's a good girl. This is my Daisy. Daisy is where my dream really began to come true. Never thought I would be able to get a mini jersey. Heifer. But with the generosity of somebody gifting this one to us, made it possible. Never could have done it otherwise.